Welcome to the tutorial for the unlined Galena bra and panty. The panty is off camera, but I will bring it on when we get to that point. What I love most about this variation, one is the color. It is absolutely gorgeous. If you don't have FOMO yet, you totally should because it is even prettier in person. Uh, the other reason why I love this variation is that there is only one change to this. Uh, variation and that is that the bra cups are unlined but a lot of people get scared because they're like oh my god sewing through one layer of lace uh -uh, I'm not even gonna go there I already know it's gonna be hard it's gonna be a total sewing disaster so my point of this tutorial is to walk you through all the steps and show you that it is not that hard as long as you have the right tools, you have the right supplies, and maybe a good teacher, um, uh, you can totally do it. Uh, so let me take this off camera, and let's just go over some basics about sewing through fine fabrics, such as one layer of lace. One, you wanna make sure you, that you have the right needle. So this needle, I'm using a Inspira. The reason why I'm using an Inspira is because I sew on fafs, I'm a faff girl. Um, and they, their brand of needles are Inspire, but you can use a Schmetz, um, uh, yeah, or any other brand. I know, linking on the name, what is it? Hmm, can't think of it, but it's another brand of needles that I'm blanking on right now. It might come to me later on in the tutorial. So I am using a size 60 Microtex needle. Microtex, because this is a stretch lace, you wanna make sure that you have a needle that is for stretch fabrics. Um, thread, so I always use Guterman's Mara 120 thread. This is color 369 to go with the burgundy. I get this from Waywack or Wawalk.com, um, however you say it. They have an amazing color chart with all of the colors on it. Um, again, this is color 369 that goes with the burgundy. Um, so those are just some basics um, for sewing through fine fabrics. There's one other basic, but I will get to that when we get to the sewing machine. So there's only one change to this variation, and that is to cut the bra cups out of one layer of fabric, which is a lace, and that the scallop edge is on top. Um, so the thing to remember is that when cutting through or when having a scalp lace detailing on the top edge of the bra cups, you want to make sure that when you sew these together, I'm overlapping them a half of an inch because the seam allowance is a quarter of an inch, that the scallop lace is a nice continuous pattern. What you don't want is you don't want this to be higher, that to be lower, and it to look awkward. So when you're cutting it out, I, you wanna make sure that there's the edge of the pattern, but then you wanna mark, I haven't because I can eyeball this, you wanna mark this seam line on both edges. And you wanna make sure that when you cut out the lace, the seam line is hitting the same point on the scallop lace. So when you have a scallop lace, you have the high point and you have the low point of the scallop. Pretty self-explanatory. So you just wanna make sure that when these are sewn together, that they come together at the same point. That can be at the high point or the low point. That's something that you will determine. So once you have everything cut out, what you will do is you will put right sides together. Um, I, I do not use pins. If you've taken a class with me, people will think I'm nuts, but I don't use pins. Um, you will sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Um, I will get to the sewing uh, and you'll be able to see me do that. But if you find that sewing through, even after I show you the directions, uh, if you find that sewing through one layer can't do it, here is a little tip. Is that you can use a strip of, I don't even think that you could, oh yeah, there you can see it. Um, a strip of sheer cup lining and you can place this over your seam line, or over your fabric, underneath your fabric, and this just adds a little bit of stability when sewing so that the fabric doesn't get sucked into the feed docks. So let's switch views, and I will go under the um, sewing machine. I kind of feel like I'm saying I'm going under the knife, but I'm not, um, under the scissors. No, under the sewing machine, and I will show you uh, exactly how to sew through sheer lace. Okay, so we are at the sewing machine. 
Uh, the first thing that I want to point out is that when I start sewing, what you don't want to do is you don't want to start sewing with the fabric in front of the presser foot. You want to start with it a little bit behind the presser foot. That will help feed the fabric into the machine. A lot of times if you start before the needle, what happens is the feed dogs, which is what moves the fabric through the machine, doesn't have anything to pick it up. And when it does pick it up, it sucks it right into the feed dogs. And then you have a total breakdown moment and you just give up. So I'm gonna start a little bit inside or with the fabric behind the um, needle. And as I am looking at this, I'm realizing that my needle isn't threaded. Oh my God. Well, definitely a tip to have your needle threaded if you want to sew through sheer fabrics. Okay, so now that we have thread in the needle, we will start sewing. So I like to do one stitch forward, one or two stitches forwards, and then one or two stitches backwards. And I'm going super close to the edge. And then I'm giving this, uh, just I'm just keeping it taut as I'm sewing it. Now, if you find that this is even not enough, not enough, that's the wrong word. If you find that this is difficult, what you can do is you can put the sheer cup lining underneath and sew with it. It just adds a little bit layer, it adds a layer of stability and makes it a little bit easier to sew. Stitch at the end. Cut off his little tail. And then let me, yeah, there we go. Um, so then I will trim the sheer cup lining to almost nothing, right to the straight, or right to the straight stitch. And I'm using my duck build scissors, which allow me to get really close to the seam line. Okay, so now you've sewn your seam. If you see here, I don't go all the way to the edge. That's a little bit better. I don't go, you don't have to go all the way to the tip of the top of the edge. It's okay, because when you fold it back, you're gonna sew that together. Um, Cause a lot of times when you sew all the way to the edge here, that's when it gets sucked into the feed dogs. So I'm gonna switch, you can iron this open or the, the I'm sorry, you can iron this Use an iron on a synthetic setting. Steam is your friend. Um, and press it to one side. Or what I like to do is I like to use a um, zigzag stitch. And I'm gonna zigzag stitch it down. Again, you want to make sure that you start with the fabric behind the needle, and then you are going to back stitch.
beautiful. Let's take a peek. There we go. So that's what it'll look like afterwards. And if you still have a little bit on the top that's like not secure, you can just do a little straight stitch back and forth up here. Um, but that makes it so that you don't really have to iron it. It lays really nice and flat. The seam isn't like buckling there. And once you finish this, you you just proceed with the rest of the instructions. You just don't add the fold over elastic on top. What you will do is you'll finish this center front edge with the fold over elastic. And so the Galena per the instructions. So we went over the bra. Let's quickly go over the panty. If you got through sewing one layer of uh, lace in the bra panty, it's gonna be a complete breeze. Uh, first thing to point out is that the back layer, the back panty is just one layer of mesh. The front panty is just one layer of lace. And you will place your lace along the pattern pieces here. And then before you sew it um, to the back panty, um, you will sew the two layers together. Zigzag stitch up, zigzag stitch down. That's it. And then you just proceed with the instructions as normal.